56-year-old Dr. Gregory Michael passed away after receiving the Pfizer vaccine. 33 passed away in a Norway nursing home. 13 in Sweden, 9 in France, 7 in Iceland. What is going on with this Pfizer vaccine? What are the complications? I'm going to be breaking it down for you. Hi everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Dr. Mirinvir Singh. I'm an emergency medicine specialist here in the UK. And today I'm gonna to be breaking down what is exactly happening with the Pfizer vaccine and why did Dr. Gregory Michael pass away and why did all these other patients in the nursing homes also pass away? Firstly, I want to give all my condolences to the patient's families and that everyone else that has passed away due to coronavirus. So I'm gonna be breaking down step by step exactly what was happening and what led to the unfortunate deaths of Dr. Gregory Michael and these other patients. So I just want to put it out there to start with. I'm not associated with any governmental agency or any drug companies. I'm here purely as an independent doctor on my own, making educational and interactive YouTube videos based on what is happening around the world and in the world of medicine. So first thing is first, the European medicine agencies have ruled that the causes of death are nothing to do with the vaccine in itself. And I'm gonna to explain to you why that's the case. The CDC, Centers for Disease Control, are also investigating the situation. And also Pfizer have also acknowledged that the deaths are not to do with the vaccine in itself. Globally, over 98 million vaccines have been given. Over 31 million in the United States, 24 million in China, and 9 million in the UK, with no fatalities as a result of the vaccine itself. That goes to show the safety of the drug in itself. It is safe. There's no evidence of fatalities as a result of the vaccine. Yes, there are side effects, which are different, but no fatalities. So what exactly happened in Dr. Gregory Michael's case and these other patients in the nursing homes? I'm gonna break that down for you. Dr. Gregory Michael was a fit 56 year old doctor working in Florida as an OBGYN, an obstetric and gynecologist. He took the first dose of the Pfizer vaccine in December. We'll call this day zero. Three days later, he started to experience a petechial rash on his hands and feet. A petechial rash are small red little spots which appear on the surface of the skin. And this is because the small little capillaries are not clotting. This alludes to the problem that there's something happening in the blood work which is not allowing the blood vessels to form clots. Obviously, Dr. Gregory Michael, being a doctor, was able to pick up on this very early and he took himself actually to the ER, the emergency room, the emergency department as we call it in the UK, at his local hospital. There, they did a variety of different tests, one called a full blood panel or a full blood count. This looks at the hemoglobin, the platelets and the white cell count. And interestingly enough, when they checked the platelets, they found the platelets were at a level of zero, meaning he's got no platelets in his blood system at all. Now, normally, the platelet count, normally the platelet count is between 150,000 to 450,000 in the UK. In the UK, we say it's normally between 150 to 450. So obviously zero means zero. There were no platelets in the body system of Dr. Gregory Michael at that time. He was taken to the intensive care unit and in the intensive care unit, they tried various different techniques of giving blood, giving platelets another tech and other techniques to try to boost the platelet count to stop this bleeding process from occurring. So the diagnosis given at that time was idiopathic thrombocytopenic purpura or ITP. Now this can be as a result of autoimmune conditions or it can be a result of medications. Now we know that Dr. Gregory Michael did not have any autoimmune or any other medical conditions. So this was a very rare side effect due to a medication. So let's take a look at platelets and what they do and why they're so important. So we know platelets are involved in clotting and, and they help stop us from bleeding out. They're part of a cascade of events in terms of other clotting factors, other factors inside the blood vessels, interaction with other molecules, and together they initiate the process of clotting known as the clotting cascade and stabilize the clot. So if your platelets aren't working correctly or you don't have enough of them, then unfortunately the blood system, the clotting system will no longer be able to form a clot and therefore you start bleeding. So for those two weeks on the intensive care unit, the team were not able to raise the level of his platelets. And as a last ditched attempt, 
they wanted to send him for an operation known as a splenectomy to take the spleen out. Now the spleen is a organ in which it sequesters blood and utilizes it and therefore it's known as a last ditch attempt in order to stop the body from destroying these platelets. Very sadly and very unfortunately two days before going for this operation Dr. Gregory Michael passed away from a hemorrhagic stroke. Now a hemorrhagic stroke is a severe bleed within the brain and that's because of the ITP. The body system was unable to form clots and his blood vessels were bleeding and he suffered a very large stroke and his wife mentioned that he passed away very shortly after that. So what happened was unfortunately he suffered a very rare reaction ITP and as a result of that the body lost the normal balancing system that it has for clotting and for bleeding. Now this is very very rare and as I mentioned right at the start of this video globally over 98 million vaccines have been given. Now by the time this video goes out there will probably be millions more than this number. 31 million doses in the USA, 24 million in China and over 9 million in the United Kingdom and around the world zero fatality cases as a result of the vaccine. The vaccine is known to be safe, so people should not be alarmed and they shouldn't be scared. Yes, there are side effects and there are many other videos out there that go through the different side effects, but there are no known fatalities. So people shouldn't be unnecessarily worrying and even Dr. Gregory Michael's wife also mentioned this case and said that he himself was a big advocate for vaccines. Now the vaccines have been proven and latest research that is coming out is also showing that not only are they protecting people who are receiving the vaccine by forming antibodies, but they are also proving to reduce the rate of the infection spread. So those people who are known previously to be asymptomatic carriers, new evidence is emerging that even they are reducing the rate of transmission. So these are amazing results and it's brilliant news. And there's a lot of people out there with agendas, with conspiracy theories, and we should not be taking those things out of context. So let's have a look into the deaths that happened at these different nursing homes around Europe. Again, I'd like to give my condolences to the family. It's very sad when anybody passes away. Now, in Norway, 33 patients died after receiving the vaccine. The medical director of the Norwegian medical agencies, NOMA, told the British medical journal, the BMJ, there is no certain connection between the vaccine and the deaths. And let's have a look into why that's the case. The agency have investigated 13 of those deaths. So far, by the time the video goes out, they would have investigated more. But of those 13 that have been investigated, it is clear to say the reason why these patients passed away, it's because they were suffering from the side effects of the vaccine. Now side effects are known to be very common and these patients themselves were known to be extremely frail and have other severe medical comorbidities or severe medical problems. So as a result of taking the vaccine, unfortunately the side effects were too much for these patients. These similar side effects in otherwise less frail patients who have less severe medical problems, yes they would have suffered the same side effects but they would have been okay with it. As a result of this finding, the agency have told doctors in Norway that they need to discuss with the patients and the families of these frail patients the risks and the benefits and to weigh up whether it's right to give the vaccine on an individual to an individual basis. Because of the complications of being very frail and having different medical problems, those risk and balances need to be weighed up before making the decision whether to immunize or not. Because unfortunately, for those who are in that situation, the side effects of those medications can be too severe for them. And as a result of suffering from vomiting and diarrhea, loose stool, they might not be able to cope with the fluid losses and therefore it puts too much of a strain on the body. And the European Medicines Agency themselves have also mentioned that despite the deaths, there's no specific data to state that it's a result of the vaccine. So just to show you other figures, in Norway alone, every week, 400 patients are dying as a result of frailty and other medical problems that they have anyway. So no one knows that these patients in that 33 group would have been within that 400 of those patients. So again, we shouldn't be making inferences and coming to our own conclusions. If there are 400 deaths that are happening on a weekly basis, we have to take that into context and not just start pointing fingers and blaming without having the evidence and the results of the investigations. 
And as you can see from the investigations, there's no proof that it's as a result of the vaccine. Just like any medication that we give as doctors, we always have to weigh up the benefits and the risk on an individual to individual basis. Even it's for a, a person who potentially may be healthy, who may have a medical condition which is not severe, we still have to weigh up the risks and benefits. And therefore it's very good that this has been brought to light, so it's caused a change in practice which will then allow for a better outcome for patients moving forwards. So the outcome of this is the vaccines are proven to be safe. Yes, there are side effects. Most medications do have side effects, but we shouldn't take that out of context and we shouldn't start pointing fingers and blaming and we shouldn't start forming different theories in which we're scaremongering people. I hope this video was informative. I hope it was educational and I want you to all keep safe out there. So remember, wear your mask, wash your hands, keep your distance and be safe. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video. Look after yourselves.